Hey everybody, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here, and in this video we are assembling my 1932 Ford chassis. In the last video that we did on a 32, we prepped and painted the frame. We painted it with Imran Industrial Semi-Gloss Black. It turned out really good. I'm really, 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 really happy with it. It took a long time to dry, which Buck at Rondex Paint and Body Supply, where I got everything from, he did warn me that it would take a long time to dry. He gave me some accelerator to add to it to make it dry and cure faster. But even then, it took like three, four days before you could touch this thing and it didn't feel soft or like you could put a, a fingerprint in it. So that was, that was last weekend when we painted it. So it's been sitting here for five days. It's been sitting five days now since we sprayed it and I'm confident now that we can start assembling it. Some of the things we have to do, I don't know if you remember a while back when we had the body on, we realized that the rear suspension sat too low. So we got the rear spring apart right now. I'm gonna change out that reverse die leaf back to the standard eye leaf. And there was one, two, I think three leafs that I took out. We're gonna put those back in, put it back together and kind of see where it sits. We needed to sit about three inches higher than it currently did. So we're gonna do that in this video. We're gonna put the front suspension back under it. Hopefully get the engine and transmission in and then comes the fun stuff running brake lines, fuel lines, the gas tank can go in. I'm really excited about this part because now when stuff gets bolted on the car, like it's not for mock-up anymore, it's, it's final. It's going on for good. And then eventually, when we get the chassis done, we can put the body back on. Now, I know what you guys are probably gonna ask next, what's the plan with the body? I don't know, that body is, it's kind of a can of worms. Part of me wants to sandblast the body and, and kind of see what's left, but I also don't want to do that. Mainly, I don't want this to turn into a 10-year project. I mean, it's gonna be a 10-year project, but I would like to drive it every now and then. So I think our plan for right now is we'll get the chassis finished, kind of maybe we'll sand the orange paint off the body and just blow some black primer on it for now, bolt the body back on, drive the car for a season, and then next winter, then we'll dig into the body. You gotta, you know, I don't like spending years building a car. I have to, I wanna be able to drive it as I'm building it. That way it stays fun, it doesn't feel as pressured. Like once a car is driving on the road, it doesn't feel so much as a project car anymore because it's a roadworthy car. So at, at that point, you can just kinda tinker on it at your leisure when it's fun. So that's the plan for this video. Let's get into it. So here's the spring that we did have in the rear. This is like a 35 to 40 Ford, front, sorry, 37 to 40 Ford or 41 Ford front spring. And I like these springs because they lower it a little bit but also they will fit in a 32 rear cross member, because remember the 32 rear cross members curve, they will fit in there without grinding it down, which I like. Here's the reverse leaf that I put in. We're gonna take this back out and put the original leaf back in, plus these ones that I removed. Last night, uh, I got the old bushings out, used the, the torch for that, and they came right out, and we're gonna replace them with some Roadster Supply shackles and bushings. I like the Roadster Supply ones because they look like the original factory Ford ones, but they have the urethane insert, so they ride a little bit nicer and they're considerably easier to install. Uh, before we put this together, I might take it outside and just buzz this down real quick with the, the DA sander and some 80 grit, and then we'll blow a little bit of black spray bomb on there, just so that it, it matches. I know it's not as good a quality as the paint that we just put on the chassis, but you know what, for a spring underneath the car and what we're doing, it's gonna be just fine. To take this spring apart, I've just got a couple C-clamps on here to hold the tension on it. 
And with the C-clamps on, we just loosen this bolt off. We're not loosen it off, but take it right off, take the nut right out. And then loosen the clamps off and the tension will slowly release. I like to do two clamps at a time, just because sometimes these clamps slip and I really like my teeth. So that way you got kind of a little bit of insurance. Oh, you know what? We gotta take these out too. Hold on a minute. Clamp that back down. And then uh, take, there's two nuts and bolts down here too. These keep the spring from sliding apart. That's a bigger size. Come on. Okay, now with those out, probably get this guy right out too. Maybe not. Okay, whatever. Loosen them off a little bit and the tension will slowly release out of the spring until the point when it's not under tension anymore. Okay, there we go. Our spring pack is all apart now. So I'll cl clean and sand in between all of these, paint everything and then put it back together with the original springs. I went ahead and painted the spring and some of the, the brackets, like the bump stop brackets and the U-bolts for the springs and stuff like that. So while that stuff's drying, I'm gonna bring the front end in and put the, put the wheels and stuff back on it. That way our forklift is free. Not that we need the forklift or anything, but. And we can start getting the getting the frame ready to take off the rotisserie. I was hoping to do this stuff outside, but for some reason it is freezing today. When is spring coming? It's like almost April. We're gonna put this rear spring on now. So here's the original shackles, and here's the new Roadster Supply ones. They're exactly the same, which is great because we're not gonna be replacing the bushings on the wishbones. They are still in great shape. Same with the front ones. They were still in great shape. So we're not gonna open a can of worms by taking apart something that works perfectly fine. But these uh, new shackles, they fit perfect on this little square peg here. Now the other end that goes in the spring, I'll take you over here to where the spring is and you can see they just slide right in really nice. I don't know how many of you guys have done the original style ones with those metal sleeves that you press in, but they're the worst. That's the absolute worst design I've ever seen in my life. I'm assuming that they only did that because they hadn't invented like urethane bushings yet. So 
The urethane bushings are a way nicer upgrade. So we're gonna get one side put together and then we might need the porta power to put the other side together just to stretch the spring out a little bit. Notice I haven't put the spring back together yet. We're gonna do that once the main leaf is in just because it's a lot easier to manipulate a single spring than it is, you know, an entire spring pack. Okay, that is, went together nice. I'm hoping that I can stretch this enough to get it through there. If not, we'll just use the port of power to spring it. Oh no, well, we can do it. Thumbs of steel. Okay, there's one side. Where's my other shackle? There it is. Got the nut on. Line the other side up here. Oh yeah, that went together really nice. And then once we get this kind of in position and bolt it in so it's not gonna fall out, then we'll put the rest of the spring pack together. So I kind of thought this might happen because this is a 37 to 41 front spring. It's two inches wide and the 36 rear spring would have been two and a quarter inches wide. So I measured this on the bench before I put it together and it measured out okay. But when I put it in the car and actually bolted it together, it is a little bit out. So I'm gonna make some just make a spacer on the plasma table to take up the space in here, just so that the spring doesn't slide back and forth. I don't know if it would ever do anything, so like it's only gonna slide back and forth, you know, an eighth of an inch or so. But I mean, we're here, we might as well do it, so. The might as well. This little gap right in here is what I'm talking about. So we're gonna just make a aluminum spacer to go in there. There we go. I'm happy with that. That worked out great. And then for the finishing touch, we put all the cotter pins back through so that it looks factory. Putting this spring together is pretty much the same as when we took it apart, only the reverse order, except I'm going to put a little bit of grease in between each leaf, and that just helps them. Uh oh. Oh man, I hate when that happens. That just helps them slide a little bit. Makes for a, a nicer, smoother ride. All right, I think we're at the part of our day where we're ready to take the frame off the rotisserie. So I think we'll take the rear end outside and maybe roll the whole rotisserie outside, unbolt it out there, and then Shannon and I can carry the frame in, set it on the front end, then pick the back of the frame up and roll the rear suspension in. And 
just like that, we've got a roller again. Look at this thing. Isn't that great? I got the Oldsmobile hubcaps back on. I put the proper tires on, on the rear again. I've got the U-bolts on the back, but I still have to do the front. I think I'm gonna dig out the tote that's got all the, the parts and start putting the shocks and the bump stops back on, find the pedal assembly. Uh, I'd like to put the engine back in today. I don't know if we'll get that far, but it's on the, it's on the list of maybes. So we'll just kinda putter away and putting the rest of the, the bits back together. I'm so excited. All right, I think we're ready to put the flathead in. So I gotta turn it around so that I can drive in with, pick the engine up with the forklift and drive it into the frame. Man, this thing rolls so nice. Well, this was a great day in the shop. I'm so stoked with the progress that we got done today. From this point, we still have drive shaft can go in, uh, the pedal assembly, we gotta figure that out. I mean, or we don't really have to figure it out. There was a working pedal assembly in here. We just have to clean it up, put it back in and make sure that it's still working properly. Then we can figure out master cylinder, brake lines, gas tank, fuel line, radiator, stuff like that. We're gonna save that for another video. We've run out of time for today. Thanks everybody for watching. If you wanna support this channel, please check out lgspeedcustom.com and get yourself some. We got tons of great merch, stickers, shirts, parts, you name it, it's on there. Go check it out. Uh, thanks to Switchblade Valentines for the music on this video. Local Victoria Rockabilly Psychabilly band. Go check that out, them out on Bandcamp. You can download their entire album for five bucks. Um, yeah, what a great day, I'm so stoked.
I am so happy. Uh, let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you like the, the direction that it's going, uh, what you would do if it was your car. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's the end of the week. Today is my 20th day straight in the shop. One more tomorrow, and then I'm taking a day off. So, thanks for watching. See you guys later.